Hopefully it's recording. Okay. Hi, Jeremy. Hello. What grade are you in? I am in sixth grade. In sixth grade. Mm, so today we're going to read a book called Zen Shorts. Have you ever read this book before? Oh, no. Okay. Well, we're going to read this book, and it's actually a Caldecott honor book. Have you ever heard of a Caldecott award book? Yes. What, can you tell me about it? Well, I don't really know much, mm -hmm. but like, it's rated the best, I think. Yeah, it's, it's, when it's a Caldecott honor, it was nominated to be um, awarded the Caldecott Award. Okay, so just by looking at this cover, um, can you tell me what you think this book is about? Um, I think it's going to be about like panda roaming around the neighborhoods and just doing stuff. Yeah? Is it because he's like standing on roofs and stuff? No. Have you ever seen, like, have you ever seen a panda in real life before? Yeah, I have. Where? It was at a zoo. Oh, that's cool. Which zoo? It was in the front of the zoo. Oh, okay. So, have you ever been on a picture walk before? Yes. We're going to go on a picture walk. Can you tell me what a picture walk is? Um, a picture walk is looking at the pictures in the book and then you kind of guess what the book's about. Yeah. Okay. So, I want you to tell me what you think each uh, picture in this, like, each page is kind of about through the pictures. Can you speak a little more clearly for me? Um, I think the boy is trying to show something outside of, of the window. Oh. And then it looks like he's calling his brother. Yeah, it looks something. like he's right there. And then the, 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 the picture and the oh. top, it looks like they're all brothers and sisters. Oh yeah, it looks like there's three people. And I guess the brothers and sisters come out and they see a giant panda. Mm -hmm. And then the sister goes out and makes a cake for the panda. Oh yeah, oh, it's such and a cute cake. There's a bamboo stick on it. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna think that the panda is gonna live in the tent now. Mm -hmm. and, and they just talk in the tent. Oh, look at it here. The page color is different. What do you think this means? Oh, I think it's like showing a new like, setting. Mm -hmm. In this book, there's actually going to be three different stories that um, one of the characters tells. So, um, looks like they're drawing a picture of each other. Oh yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. And then he's playing with the boy. Mm -hmm. And they climb the tree. Oh, the tree looks really high. Oh, look, another color change. What do you think is happening in this picture? Um, the boy's talking to the panda. Mm -hmm. Looks like they're going to go swimming. Yeah, it does. Wow, there's a lot of stuff right here, isn't there? He looks kind of mad. Oh, he does look kind of mad. What's going on here? They're playing in the pool. And they took out all the objects of this. Mm -hmm. Because there's one in the pool. Yeah. The pool's empty now. It's like a tea, tea party. Mm -hmm. It's like there's another story. It's about the mice. Oh, there's two mice. And yeah, then it looks like the boy comes back home. Uh huh. Okay, so the reason why I chose this book, or the reason why we're reading this book today, is so that we can look at a couple of words in this book and uh, find its Latin root meaning. Have you ever found the different root and uh, meanings, like from the where it derives from Latin? Uh, we did it in school. Once. You did it in school. Okay, that's good. So there's going to be a lot of easy words in this book, like umbrella or arriving. Words that you already know, like stepped, brought. There's going to be a lot of easy words in here, too. And then there's going to be a couple of possibly hard words for you that you might not know. Like, for instance, the word brooding. Do you know what brooding means? Um, no. Brooding means to, like, keep or, like, to... Uh, keep inside or to keep um, 
on holding on to for quite a while or to keep in thought for a long time. Oh. And words like preoccupied and transported. Let's see what else is there. There's words like sympathy. Do you know what sympathy means? Um, showing sadness. Yeah. And misfortune? Bad luck. Bad luck, yes. That's very good. Okay. There will also be some predi predictable language patterns, such as every time the main character, one of the main characters, the bear, set, uh, tells a story, he says, I will tell you a story to each of the three different children that are in this book. And then some difficult language patterns could be is that there's a lot of dialogue in this book. And so through the dialogue, um, you'll see uh, the story progress. Okay, so now we're going to start reading the story. If you could read loudly and clearly for me. Okay. Okay. Michael, there's a bear outside, said Carl. A what? called Michael. A bear. He's really big, and he's in the backyard. What's he doing? Michael asked. He's sitting. He has an umbrella, said Carl. An umbrella? By the time the boys got outside, their sister, Addie, was already talking with him. I'm sorry for arriving unannounced, said the bear. The wind carried my umbrella all the way from my backyard to your backyard. I thought I would retrieve it before it became a nuisance. He spoke with a slight panda accent. Michael introduced himself, then Addie introduced Carl, because Carl was shy around bears he didn't know. And this is how Addie, Michael, and Carl met Stillwater. The next day, Addie went to have tea with Stillwater. Hello, Addie said as she stepped inside. Come in, come in, a faraway voice called. Then she heard the voice say, oh yes, come out, come out. The water was in the backyard. He was in a tent. This is a birthday present from my uncle Rye, Stillwater said. He always gives presents on his birthday to celebrate the day he was born. I like it so much that I'm not staying in my house right now. Stillwater invited Addie to sit with him. You brought me some cake, so said Stillwater. That was very nice of you. Is it your birthday? he asked. No, said Addie. It's not mine either, said Stillwater. But let me give you a gift for my uncle's birthday. I will tell you a story. Uncle Rye and the Moon My uncle Rye lived alone in a small house up in the hills. He didn't own many things. He lived a simple life. One evening, he discovered he had a visitor. A robber had broken into the house and was rummaging through my uncle's few belongings. The robber didn't notice Uncle Rye, and when my uncle said hello, the robber was so startled, startled he f almost fell over. He was so startled he almost fell down. My uncle smiled at the robber and shook his hand. Welcome, welcome. How nice of you to visit. The robber opened his mouth to speak, but he couldn't think of anything to say, because Rye never leaves anyone, because Rye never lets anyone leave empty-handed. He looked around the tiny hut for a gift for the robber, but there was nothing to give. The robber began to back towards the door. He wanted to leave. At last, Uncle Rye knew what to do. He took off his only robe, which was old and tattered. He only said, please take this. The robber thought my uncle was crazy. He took the robe, dashed out the door, and escaped into the night. My uncle sat and looked at the moon. It's silvery light spilling over the mountains, making all things quietly beautiful. Poor man, lamented my uncle. All I had to give him was my tattered robe. If, I, if only I could have given him this wonderful moon. <coughs> okay, let's stop here. Can you tell me what's happened so far in the story? Um, so, it was Stillwater's birthday. I meant Stillwater's uncle's birthday. Uh huh. And his uncle gave Stillwater this tent uh -huh. for, for his birthday. Yeah. And Stillwater told um, Addie about what the uncle did. So he, um, a robber came in mm -hmm. and then um, 
So the uncle wanted to give something to the robber, mm -hmm. um, but he didn't have anything to give, so he gave his one and only robe. Mm -hmm. um, and at the end, he just said that he wished he could give him the moon. Good. Okay. Let's continue reading. Your uncle sounds nice, said Addie. I don't think I could have given away my only robe. I know how that is, said Stillwater, but there's always the moon. That was a good story, said Addie. Thank you, said Stillwater, and this is a good cake. Thanks, said Addie. I made it, my, I made it myself. So what did that story that Stillwater told say about his Uncle Rye? It said that his Uncle Rye is very nice and generous. Mm-hmm. And gives many stuff. Yeah. Okay. The next day, Michael went to see Stillwater. Here I am, Stillwater called from the tree. Mm -hmm. Can I come up? Asked Michael. If you are careful, said Stillwater. What if we could fly, said Michael. We could cast shadows on clouds, said Stillwater. But what if we fell, <coughs> said Michael. If we fell, we might break something, said Stillwater. That would be bad, said Michael. Maybe, said Stillwater. Maybe, asked Michael. Okay. The farmers look. There once was an old farmer who had worked his crops for many years. One day, his horse ran away. Upon hearing the news, his neighbors came to visit. Such bad luck, he said sympathetically. Maybe, the farmer replied. The next morning, the horse returned, bringing with it two other wild horses. Such good luck, the neighbors exclaimed. Maybe, replied the farmer. The following day, his son tried to ride one of the untamed horses and was thrown off and broke his leg. Again, the neighbors came off came to offer their sympathy on the misfortune. Such bad luck, they said. Maybe, answered the farmer. Okay, I'm going to stop you right here. So the word sympathy, do you know what the two parts that the word sympathy might break up into? Uh, sim empathy? Yeah, so do you by chance know what sim means in its uh, Greek origin or Latin origin? Bad, mm, Close. Sim actually means to be with. Do you by chance know what pathy is? It's kind of hard, right? Pathy? Yeah. It means to have like emotion or to be engaged, to be in like emotion. So if you put the two words together, it means to be in emotion with someone, right? So sympathy means to like be, in this case, to be sad for someone or to be sad with someone, right? Yeah. Okay, you can keep reading. The next day, after that, the day after that, military officials came to the village to draft young men into the army to fight in a war. <laughs> Seeing that the son's leg was broken, they passed him by. Such good luck, cried the neighbors. Maybe, said the farmer. I get it, said Michael. Maybe good luck and bad luck are all mixed up. You never know what will happen next. Yes, Stillwater agreed. You never know. The day after that, Carl went to visit Stillwater. Michael. Michael said, I couldn't bring over our stuff to go swimming. I'm mad at Michael. He's always telling me what to do. So I brought everything. Hmm, said Stillwater. It's a little pool. I don't know if all those things will fit. Let's see, Carl said. Let's see, said Stillwater. Stillwater looked at the pool. The things can go swimming, but we can't, he said. I brought too much stuff, said Carl. That's okay, said Stillwater. I'll help you carry it home later. Why does Michael always have to tell me what to do, Carl said. If we were here, I would climb up really high, and I would jump on him like this, and I would do a big smash like this. Later, Carl and Stillwater had tea. Carl, said Stillwater, you spent the whole day being angry with Michael. Did you notice how much fun we had? Carl watched the steam rise from his cup. Okay, I'm going to stop you right here again. So what was that story about? Um, it was about Carl being mad at his brother Michael because Michael tells him every Michael tells him Michael tells Carl to do everything. Yeah. Okay. And then you can keep reading. And then, okay. I'm sorry I brought all this stuff, Carl said. You don't need to be sorry, said Stillwater. Right now you you need to carry. Hold on tight and I'll tell you a story. A heavy load. Two traveling monks reached a town where there was a young woman waiting to step out of her seat and chair. The rains had made deep puddles 
and she couldn't step across without spoiling her silken robes. She stood there, looking very cross and impatient. She was scouting her attendants. They had nowhere to place the packages they held for her, so they couldn't help her across the puddle. The younger monk noticed the woman, said nothing, and walked by. The older monk quickly picked up, picked her up and put her on his back, transported her, transported her across the water, and put her down on the other side. She didn't thank the older monk. She just shoved him out of the way and departed. Okay. Hold on. So the word transported here, what do you think it splits into? Transported? Yeah. Transported. It. Yeah. Do you by chance know what the word or the part trans might mean? Uh, I'm not that sure. The word trans means to move, to be, go across. Do you by chance know what port means? We like to move or travel. Yeah, good job. And so the ED is past tense, like we all know, right? Yeah. Okay. As they continued on their way, the young monk was brooding and preoccupied. After several oh. hours unable to hold his silence, he spoke out. That woman back there was very selfish and rude, but you picked her up on your back and carried her, and she didn't even thank you. I set the woman down hours ago, the older monk replied. Why are you still carrying her? <clears throat> Do you think you have carried it long enough, asked Stillwater. Yes, said Carl. Good, said Stillwater. Okay, we're going to stop right here. So, what do you think that story with the monks were about? That story was about not keep your anger with you. And like that. That's good, that's good. Okay, what do you think this it is that um, the anger, Stillwater is talking the about? Anger to Michael? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Continue. And this is how Addie, Michael, Carl, and Stillwater became friends. Okay. That's the end of the book. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a few questions. Okay. So, after reading this story multiple times, how did it make you feel? Uh, good. Good. What did you like about the story? Um, I liked how there were multiple stories showing um, and also helping us in detail mm -hmm. of knowing what they were talking about. What, which one of the stories was your favorite? The first one. Why? Because um, the, um, the uncle was very generous and kept giving things. Uh-huh. Okay. So, has there been a time where you could relate to one of Stillwater's three stories? No. No? You've never had a time where um, any of these stories that it felt like you were in like part of any of these stories no no okay okay then okay Jeremy thank you so much for doing this lesson with me um, I chose this book because you seem very mature during our pre-assessment and so this book has a lot of philosophical mini stories which was what all of these little different colored pages were about and it had a lot of deep questions and thoughts that um, you could think of as a reader. And I know reading it was pretty easy, right? Yeah. Okay. So, okay, now we're going to work on a worksheet that has morpheme triangles, where it breaks up some of the words that we saw in the book into smaller parts, and we're going to find the Latin roots of them, and we're going to relate them to other words, okay? Okay. Okay.